Hi and welcome to TRX Bench. Well, if you're following my channel, you have uh, seen that uh, we repaired a CB radio, a Starbo XF4012. And uh, you know, this radio is back. But it is not back because uh, it is faulty again. So the guy who uh, is using this radio is so excited. Uh, by its quality, its sounds quality, its audio quality, that he really wants to get the radio extended. And that means this old radio uh, has uh, only 40 channels and uh, in our area we have 80 channels which are allowed by law and uh, so he wanted to get it converted to 80 channels so that uh, he can use all the uh, channels to work uh, with his friends and so uh, he uh, brought it back and said hey can you update it to the last norm uh, so that uh, I really can use the 80 channels and that is what we want to look uh, into and let's try to get it up to 80 channels Right, and here is our old beauty. And uh, well, you see, if we are dialing here, we uh, have 40 channels uh, available. But uh, as I told you, here in our region, um, we have uh, 80 channels which are allowed by law. So, you know, um, most uh, of um, the friends of the owner of uh, the radio are working on higher frequencies so eh, he is now a little bit in, in trouble because he just wanted to use uh, the XF4012 uh, but he can't as you know it's only a 40 channel radio so therefore um, we dived uh, into the issue a little bit and uh, yeah we find a very very nice solution so all we know is this little module and uh, we have uh, two ships. Uh, the first is uh, the little microcontroller and uh, the second ship is uh, of course a new PLL circuit. So that's, that means uh, we uh, have to take out the old uh, PLL which uh, is uh, a PLL-03A so that is what uh, we have here originally in our radio, right? And the old PLL is uh, sitting here underneath uh, our selector, our channel selector. So it is here down below in the dark. So let's see if uh, we can uh, illuminate it a little bit. So down there we uh, have our old uh, PLL-03A. And uh, we uh, simply need uh, to take uh, it out and uh, we have to place uh, the new uh, PLL module, what uh, we uh, have here. And uh, then, okay, so we have a little bit uh, to adapt the circuit. That is uh, on one hand adapting our uh, loop circuit or better said uh, loop uh, filter so that is uh, you know uh, the circuitry portion which uh, is um, in front of uh, our uh, VCO to control the VCO by a DC right and uh, well then of course we have to adapt here uh, some um, traces here on uh, our uh, selector switch uh, to be able uh, to get uh, 80 channels um, out of uh, the radio and uh, out of uh, our VCO because down here so that uh, is the VCO circuit and uh, we want uh, to use the old uh, VCO right so only uh, the loop filter gets uh, adapted and you know some um, additional little diodes have to be installed and we have to cut some um, traces here and there uh, you know to uh, get uh, our VCO and of course uh, our LED um, uh, converted to the new um, norm 
and to, to use of course our old uh, selector switch the old VCO right so the only thing uh, really we need is to take out the old PLL and drop this one in. So therefore we have a very nice guy here in Austria not Australia Austria and uh, yeah it is uh, Gerhard uh, Maurer and uh, he um, is developing a PLL circuit especially for old uh, radios and uh, yeah when uh, you look uh, down here to uh, his page uh, you see exactly what uh, he's doing I mean first of all uh, his uh, web address is funkservice.com AT, right? And uh, you see he is delivering uh, PLL modules with uh, LED function and uh, AT uh, uh, channels, right? So that is a uh, pin compatible replacement for original PLL for self-installation. AT channels in German or UK norm with uh, automatic switchover right so therefore uh, you find here uh, the old uh, PLL 03A and uh, you get here a fully um, general uh, installation guide and uh, you get here a schematic uh, to get an overview how it is built and you see it is uh, absolutely a fair uh, pricing here so it is uh, 32 euro which is more or less um, equal to uh, 32 uh, dollars so there you can uh, get all uh, the different uh, modules and uh, you see uh, for uh, different uh, original uh, PLLs are available and uh, therefore yeah um, go on to his uh, site and uh, see uh, what uh, he is offering and uh, of course uh, we have here um, our module for uh, the PLL uh, 03A so that is uh, especially done for our Stabo 4012 so let's see that uh, we can uh, get it here into our radio and uh, let's see uh, how it works Okay, maybe uh, for um, you who are interested uh, in, so he is using uh, a new uh, PLL, so that is a U6205B, so that is a 1.3 gigahertz uh, PLL with uh, I squared uh, C bus control, so uh, you can uh, see it here, so that is a I squared C bus uh, controller and uh, then uh, here we uh, have our charge pump uh, for driving our um, uh, VCO right and uh, that all is uh, controlled by um, an uh, 80 mega 48 uh, microcontroller and uh, yeah this uh, microcontroller is uh, really able uh, to take you know uh, the information from the old uh, channel selector and uh, can uh, convert it to new um, uh, information for uh, the new PLL and uh, so he is able to use the old um, circuitry especially the VCO and the old um, channel selector so he is able to control that all by um, the um, 80 uh, mega uh, 80 uh, mega 48 so there um, is uh, what uh, he is using and that is really straightforward what uh, uh, he has done and uh, yeah I thought uh, it is a nice information for all of you who are interested to convert an old radio Okay, and therefore the first uh, what uh, we have to do, we uh, have to um, take out here our old uh, PLL of course and uh, we have to uh, take out here some uh, caps from the old uh, loop filter 
and uh, then uh, yeah we uh, have to drop in the new one and of course on his uh, website you get uh, here a nice uh, print with uh, all the uh, old uh, capacitors you uh, have to take out from the old uh, loop filter and you see you have to do some bridges and uh, we uh, have to install here um, uh, um, a pull down um, a resistor array uh, to make it all uh, stable with uh, the new uh, controller and uh, yeah therefore let's start okay so first step uh, has been done so you see that uh, our IC so the old PLL is out and uh, here our loop filter capacitors are out so um, I guess the first uh, what we do now is uh, to clean here a little bit uh, the portion where we are working um, because he has really a lot of uh, old um, yeah residue um, it, it, it must be a flux residue I believe so uh, let me clean it here a little bit and uh, then we go ahead okay so the board uh, has been cleaned so now uh, it is uh, much better to work on and the PCB from our uh, channel selector has been uh, cleaned uh, as well um, well then one um, correction so we uh, have taken out here some uh, capacitors so that uh, is uh, what uh, I have uh, shown you but uh, that are not or that is not the loop filter so that uh, was uh, wrong so the um, capacitors we have been taken out are all around here our U2 uh, our C3001 uh, right and um, you know that uh, I see is um, not or has nothing to do with uh, our loop filter so our loop filter is uh, down here and uh, you see that uh, here our DC is uh, supplying here our capacity diode which uh, is for changing our um, VCO output frequency right so this together together with uh, the coil and uh, this tank circuit uh, at least are um, here our VCO right and uh, to change the frequency of our VCO of course we uh, have here this uh, cap diode that uh, get get uh, feed it by our filter here and uh, that is directly coming here out of our PLL03 and uh, right here uh, the output which is uh, pin uh, 6 right so that is our phase detector output and uh, this is, of course, our phase detector output has to go over our filter and then as DC to our voltage controlled oscillator, right? Okay, but uh, the um, caps we have um, taken out so far are here our C18, our C15, and uh, what else? Uh, C16, I believe and here our C11 and you see that is all around here um, our U2 which uh, is a kind uh, of amplifier and uh, oscillator uh, circuit because uh, you see here our X1 that is our master uh, oscillator or reference oscillator and uh, it goes here into our uh, U2 and uh, we can pick at uh, pin 3 we uh, can uh, pick our master um, frequency and uh, that is uh, as well our reference oscillator for our PLL because you may know that uh, we always need a master reference input right and then 
we need uh, a portion of our VCO frequency also back uh, to the PLL that uh, this both frequencies get uh, compared and then uh, you know the phase detector inside can adjust the frequency exactly to what it is needed for the uh, frequencies uh, we want to transmit on or receive on and therefore uh, yeah once again a portion from the VCO get always compared with uh, our master frequency right but uh, here you can uh, see that uh, maybe I do not have uh, the complete documentation of our PLL03 so uh, we have really so old um, components here uh, in uh, that uh, I have no only uh, a short overview over our PLL03 and uh, therefore I do not uh, really um, know because of the missing documentation how um, the uh, F in so that means a portion from uh, our oscillator from our VCO I do not really know how uh, that can be divided because you know uh, we need um, uh, a code uh, from our channel selector to get an information to the PLL telling the PLL how um, you know the frequency should be divided to get finally our VCO to the right frequency and uh, yeah I do not really have all the needed documentation so therefore our U2 is uh, having uh, a mixer as well and uh, we can see that uh, here um, from uh, our VCO you see that uh, the frequency is taken off here first of all you can see that uh, it is going down here and uh, if we are following uh, along so uh, we uh, see that uh, it directly goes here uh, to our first mixer so that is our local oscillator one frequency which uh, we get out here out of our VCO okay so then uh, you see that uh, a portion also gets here to pin 4 okay and uh, if we see here um, this uh, document here you see uh, is it better maybe that way okay so what what we can uh, see here here at uh, pin 1 we uh, have our uh, crystal our master uh, oscillator right so that is here okay and uh, then uh, on pin 4 we have a mixer and you see that our VCO frequency get mixed with the master crystal oscillator and uh, the output on uh, pin 6 right uh, we have here and it is uh, coupled and uh, gets directly into pin 7 and uh, pin 7 then you uh, can see it here is um, an amplifier and pin 9 is the output of the amplifier and now if you go down here you get to pin 8 and uh, if we watch here um, pin 8 okay which is here you may uh, see that it is F in so that is uh, the uh, let's see on pin 8 you see here it is uh, the VCO frequency input but we see that uh, it is not uh, our frequency which is directly um, produced by our VCO it is uh, going here over a mixer so that uh, the frequency with the master crystal gets mixed to I believe lower frequency I haven't tested it to a lower frequency and that lower frequency get then um, back to the uh, PLL to compare the VCO frequency with 
the master crystal frequency. So therefore we have this uh, C3001 here in between and uh, therefore what we have done so far we uh, I believe uh, that uh, this um, IC will uh, will uh, taken out. Um, I, I have not uh, completely seen uh, what um, has been done but uh, a modern uh, PLL uh, circuit uh, is much more capable and uh, so I think that you know uh, there is not a mixer um, necessary to bring down the VCO frequency for comparison but anyways um, you see um, the guy um, who uh, produced here our little uh, module really uh, did a nice job because he really um, or his uh, um, aim was really to uh, get uh, all the informations here from the old circuit into our new little module and uh, then using the old signal somehow to be able to uh, get the right uh, frequency out of the VCO and uh, then of course uh, we need um, our LO1 and LO1 as I told you gets here to the first mixer okay and that is as I already told you the output here from our VCO okay and secondly our second mixer which is over here gets directly and you can uh, follow here along gets directly the frequency here from the master um, crystal and uh, the 10.240 megahertz are very common for uh, you know uh, the second uh, LO so that uh, all fits uh, very nice uh, together because here our CF2 uh, which uh, is a filter is a 10.7 megahertz uh, filter so um, that uh, uh, sorry <laughs> that is a 455 kilohertz filter sorry so and the CF1 is a 10.7 megahertz uh, filter and uh, then that uh, makes sense because if a 10.7 megahertz filter gets um, mixed with uh, the master crystal frequency of 10.240 yeah then you get 460 kilohertz as uh, you know um, second IF frequency and then if we go over you see here we have then our IF uh, amplifier and that is a 40, 460 kilohertz which uh, gets um, mixed from the 10.7 megahertz and the 10.240 megahertz from our master crystal right and uh, of course here uh, our first uh, mixer needs uh, to get our 10.7 megahertz and therefore for instance if uh, we have here channel uh, 4 as receive signal it uh, is at 27.005 megahertz right and um, we get here from our uh, VCO as uh, first uh, LO 16.305 megahertz which is then uh, our needed 10.7 megahertz here uh, to get here through this uh, filter CF1. So I hope uh, that uh, uh, might uh, help a little bit to understand how it all works uh, together. And here on the board you can uh, see this uh, filter CF1 and uh, CF2. So here that is our CF1, um, right? 10.7 uh, megahertz. And this crystal filter here is our CF2 for uh, 455 for 60 kilohertz um, and that is finally then our IF. Yeah that is uh, how it works together and uh, therefore 
yeah, we are making progress. So next will be that uh, we uh, fit in here uh, our new module and then we can go ahead. And no, we do not uh, do uh, the module first. Uh, we will uh, swap out uh, some uh, capacitors first. I mean, uh, here we this both and that one here down there. Uh, that is our loop filter, and uh, we will uh, swap them out and uh, we will change the value. We will change the value of one of them to make uh, the loop filter more efficient for our new. Um, circuitry and uh, additional to that uh, I will swap out uh, this guy which is uh, C14 um, I believe which uh, is a filter cap for uh, our supply voltage and uh, as well this one it is also a filter cap for our uh, supply voltage and uh, I do not want uh, to have here two old capacitors in circuit because you know this, this is a Zener diode down there and that uh, Zener diode is uh, finally supplying our U2 so that is uh, our amplifier circuit this guy here which uh, is uh, finally responsible for our master uh, frequency so that here is our master crystal 10 Point uh, two forty, right megahertz, and uh, if uh, we have here um, uh, a dirty DC due to an old uh, cap, so that is not uh, really fun. So therefore, I gonna change uh, the filter uh, caps. That is very important. And additional to that, even our new circuitry, so our new module gets uh, finally supplied by this little uh, Zener diode and uh, therefore we are gonna change it uh, as well we need absolutely clean DC that uh, our new circuitry can work so that is what I'm gonna do before I drop in the new module Okay, our capacitors are in um, and before you can't see it anymore because uh, our new module will be in front so you see down there our new resistor array, right? So that is uh, already in and um, I have here already some uh, sockets here for uh, our new uh, PLL uh, module, right? so uh, that uh, it could be taken out uh, if you want to and uh, that will now get here in front and then we do not see our resistor array any longer and as you can see our new PLL uh, unit uh, is in and uh, you also can see it uh, fits very nicely here under uh, our yeah, selector or LED uh, board uh, whatever and uh, so our next step will be that uh, we do here the modification on uh, our uh, yeah, PCB or selector um, LED um, PCB whatever you want to call it but we have to do some modifications here and uh, that is what we wanted to do now Okay, and the modification of our display board is uh, done as well. So, um, yeah, if I zoom in here a little bit, you see that uh, we have here some uh, diodes and uh, all the leads, which uh, finally goes down here to uh, our new module. So, don't worry about uh, this part. So, that is all described in... Um, the manual which uh, you can uh, download uh, on uh, the web page uh, from uh, Gerhard so that is a web page I have uh, shown you right in the beginning of this video so that is uh, greatly described so that uh, will be no problem okay so far so good um, now we can uh, really perform our first test and remember 
the radio had uh, 40 channels before and uh, should now be upgraded to 80 channels. So the first what we can test is if we simply see 80 channels because normally the radio would uh, swap from um, channel 40 back to uh, 1 as long we uh, do it uh, we, we turn it um, clockwise right okay so let's switch in okay so we start with uh, what is it channel 4 okay so let's see if uh, we really have uh, all the digits so let me turn down here our uh, volume a little bit and now we really want to see if we really display any channel or all 80 channels so that is what we expect so now we only check if uh, all segments are coming up right after the modification um, I mean it is not new up to 40 all is fine but we do not know if we still have all segments that is what we are checking for now we are on 40 and normally it would now jump back to channel 1 if I uh, turn it uh, clockwise but now after the modification we should be able to go up to channel 80 let's see oh wow 41 hey so that is obviously working so and uh, yeah the nice thing is that uh, this all is uh, possible with the old um, dial uh, knob here because uh, it is only um, you know able to give uh, the BCD information to uh, our PLL so at least to the old PLL uh, 03 um, so when we are reaching channel 40 there must be another information that uh, the new um, uh, 80 um, uh, microprocessor and uh, of course uh, uh, PLL knows that now it should be shown a channel higher 40 and uh, that is uh, what uh, we uh, put here our diodes in so that we get this additional information hey um, we are turning clockwise and uh, we are going over 40 and now we should see of course 41 and upwards right so and we should really go up to 80 and uh, old segments are really nice and also channel 80 and now we should uh, jump uh, back to one and that is what we are doing so here from uh, our channel selector all is uh, definitely absolutely fine uh, what we need to check uh, right now of course is um, does the radio receive and uh, uh, does it really receive on the new channels as well so that is what we want to check next okay and to start our testing um, especially for uh, sensitivity and uh, well when we are reaching uh, the right uh, sensitivity uh, minus uh, 118 dBm up to minus 120 21 dBm so uh, that is uh, the more or less a maximum sensitivity this radio will be able to deliver um, then we really need uh, now to start on uh, channel uh, 41 why because uh, really uh, channel 41 is uh, the lowest frequency so that is now uh, 26.565 megahertz so 41 is really the lowest frequency and channel 40 is uh, the lowest frequency right so um, uh, sorry it's the highest frequency and that is uh, 27405 megahertz so how does that work out ah, hang on a second I will explain it to you in a minute in a sec okay so if we look uh, here onto this table so that is uh, the European harmonized uh, frequency uh, setup so uh, which goes from uh, channel 1 to uh, channel 40 and you see 
uh, channel 1 is uh, 26965 okay and uh, channel 40 is uh, 27405 so that is a normal uh, European setup so that is the harmonized frequency right if we are now uh, looking for our 80 channels so then uh, we have to go here onto this table and uh, what we can uh, see here so far ah, sorry for the camera work so what we see here so that is a national um, extension right and uh, what you can see here is that uh, channel 41 is really 26565 and uh, that is the lowest frequency in uh, or within our 80 channels and you see that uh, channel 80 is uh, 26955 and uh, now when we go back here to uh, the uh, European uh, table we uh, see that uh, really channel 1 is uh, 26965 right so you see it is a little bit uh, mixed up uh, um, most likely uh, because uh, the higher frequencies are blocked uh, for other uh, services uh, so as uh, ham radio and uh, so forth and so forth and therefore they needed to go below the normal uh, frequency setup and that is the reason why 41 is the lowest frequency and 40 is the highest frequency within uh, the entire spectrum right okay and that is uh, of course uh, the reason why uh, we use here um, the lowest frequency which uh, is of course our 26565 uh, and uh, yeah I'm sending in with uh, minus, minus 70 uh, minus 80 dBm which uh, is uh, a little bit uh, lower than S9 and you hear that is a crisp and clear uh, tone and uh, you can see it here so we really have a nice uh, sign so also there you can see it is crisp uh, and clear and uh, we have a very nice uh, Senate which uh, is uh, more than uh, normal for a CB radio or even better so I've seen uh, brand new um, CB radios which uh, are not able to go above uh, 21, 22 so uh, that is uh, what I uh, have seen so because uh, the uh, used uh, FM demodulators are not that efficient but uh, here that is a very good uh, sign it for at least a, a CB radio and you see every sync is just fine with 1.8 kilohertz uh, deviation so all that is uh, exactly how it should be now I'm of course interested in the sensitivity and uh, if the sensitivity is really going down to pff, let me say um, around minus 120 then we definitely have a value which is fantastic and therefore let me switch here uh, our tester to uh, Synod now it is and uh, let's say uh, we want to see where is this 12 dB uh, Synod so therefore we tell our tester 12 dB and now it uh, automatically starts uh, testing for uh, sensitivity and uh, you see here search uh, ended uh, normally and that is fantastic so that is absolutely incredible so we uh, are reaching uh, minus 123 dBm and uh, we are uh, peaking or we are in average here at uh, 12 dB and that is uh, fantastic so let's uh, hear and of course there is noise that is uh, for sure but uh, you would be able to listen uh, to distant end so 
uh, the guy or the lady what you are talking to so you would be able to understand the conversation and uh, minus uh, uh, 123 dBm is really an incredible low um, value and uh, yeah that is really awesome because uh, remember so we do not have uh, changed our VCO and the VCO is able uh, really to go over the entire frequency band without any problems I mean that the radio is working on uh, uh, channel 40 which is the highest frequency that is what we already know from uh, our last test when we did the repair and uh, you see here even on the lowest frequency we still reaching this fantastic um, um, uh, sensitivity right and the radio is working just fine and we didn't do any alignment to the VCO and that is really fantastic believe me okay since we uh, do not need to, to do any additional alignment because the radio is working fantastic uh, so no doubt uh, so uh, if you are interested um, then you can stay and uh, watch uh, what the changes are um, with all the modifications uh, done here on our old uh, setup, right? And uh, well, if you're not interested in uh, this detail, so we are finished, as I said, we do not need to do any alignment, so that is just fine. And uh, yeah, for all the others, um, when uh, we have talking here about our uh, U2. So uh, I already uh, told you that uh, we have here um, uh, an additional mixer here in uh, our um, U2 IC which is here uh, named as uh, C301 and uh, you see here uh, the mixer circuit and uh, this here is um, at least our master crystal which uh, we have uh, over here right so here's our master and you see that uh, here on pin uh, 3 which uh, is of course here uh, the output uh, after the buffer right and uh, that is uh, the master crystal which uh, goes here into our uh, PLL right uh, but, uh, but then you see that uh, originally uh, when here our VCO frequency was picked um, it uh, was going here over our C18 which uh, we have taken out and uh, it was supplied to pin 4 okay and uh, if we uh, look here onto this you see that uh, here pin 4 is one input and uh, the second input uh, is uh, the master frequency um, frequency right and that uh, is going uh, to pin 6 okay and uh, when uh, we are checking that uh, what what's happening here on uh, our radio so you uh, see originally uh, the output of our mixer goes here into this amplifier and then gets down as um, frequency at least at our um, VCO frequency als uh, feedback information into our uh, PLL circuit so that the phase detector is uh, able to uh, deliver at least the right uh, DC here to uh, our capacity diode to influence here our VCO right and uh, with uh, all the new modification we uh, have some uh, changes so uh, the complete uh, converter um, our mixer has been uh, taken out so you see that uh, we have uh, taken out the C18 so therefore um, we do not have here our uh, information going over to fear, uh, 4 but uh, now we have here a bridge and we directly uh, deliver our VCO frequency to pin 6 over this T C12 uh, it is going into uh, the amplifier and is then without any mixing uh, going directly to F in uh, of our new PLL circuit and uh, yeah so you see that uh, has been uh, the changes 
and uh, as well uh, some uh, changes has been made here at uh, the loop filter and uh, then uh, we have here um, r uh, uh, swapped out the old uh, capacitors especially this one and uh, where is the second one here because uh, the red line here is our power supply right and uh, yeah so we have uh, taken this both out and we replaced this old capacitors with new capacitors and that was a good idea I've tested uh, the um, uh, capacitors and uh, they were leaky and uh, we changed uh, here our um, loop circuit a little bit uh, with a, a smaller capacitor to adapt it more to our new PLL. So that is uh, what it is uh, all about and maybe that uh, is a little bit additional uh, information so far. All right. Yeah, and uh, that is the end of our video. So uh, we have a successful conversion to uh, 80 channels and uh, you have seen how excellent uh, our modification uh, is uh, working. So the new modules uh, are really perfect, highly recommended. So you can really convert your old radio to uh, a new norm if you like. And uh, yeah, it was uh, not uh, really difficult. It was a nice um, modification. It really made uh, fun. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, the one or the other can use this modification for their own radio as well. And uh, then um, you see how much uh, it is um, converting to a modern or more fresh radio for another couple of years. Okay, so that's it so far. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.